Good morning, everybody. Uh, it is a great privilege to be with you. You've been very much in my thoughts and, and my prayers of this very sad season in the history of the British Methodist Church. You know, as a fellow Wesleyan tribe, we, the Free Methodist Church, have a close affinity with you as you remain faithful to the early Methodist doctrine and practice, which was New Testament doctrine and practice. It still is. Now, my heart is deeply moved for you, and I know that many in the Free Methodist Church also felt their hearts deeply moved. And we want to bless you, and we want to support you in any way that we can. Somebody might be asking, well, who are the Free Methodists? I've never heard of them. You know, I really go back to 1771, the second Methodist conference held in Bristol. John Wesley said at that conference, our brethren in America call aloud for our help. Who are willing to go and help them? Francis Asbury from the black country felt the call of God and went to America. When he arrived, there were just 600 Methodists. By the time of his death, there were 124,000 Methodists. By 1860, this Episcopalian Methodist church that had experienced revival was no longer remaining faithful. B.T. Roberts spoke out about the decline and he was kicked out. And he, along with others, desired to remain faithful, felt the call of God to establish the Free Methodist Church, which today is in a hundred countries of the world. It came home to England in the early 1970s. There were three British Methodist ministers who were concerned about the drift towards liberal theology. And as they spoke up, they were basically shown the door to leave. That's our history. So let's look now at our identity. So we are... Wesley and Armin in our theology, we are Holy Spirit led, we are missional in word and deed. Our Wesleyan theology can be summed up in the four roles of Methodism. All need to be saved, all can be saved, all can know they are saved, and all can be saved to the uttermost. We believe in an unlimited atonement that Christ died for all. We recognize that not everybody will believe, not everybody will put their faith and their trust in Jesus Christ, who is the only way to salvation, who is the way, the truth, and the life. But some will. Like John Wesley, we have the same passion to spread scriptural holiness throughout the land, and the Bible is our ultimate authority. The Holy Spirit led Obedient faith is how we enter into the kingdom of God, and it's how we continue in relationship with God. There are times when it requires great courage to follow the Holy Spirit's leading. We are missional in word and deed. You know, John Wesley ministered to both the physical and the spiritual needs of people. You know, it's not enough to merely be involved in social action and social care. We need people to hear the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so it's our responsibility to bring that. Paul, writing to the Romans, said this, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is a power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. We have not watered anything down, and I am so grateful that the Free Methodist Church is 100% united in remaining faithful to God's word, faithful to the interpretation that has stood for centuries about marriage and gender and all those issues. I am so grateful to God for that. Our identity can be summed up in three freedoms, set free, living free, and bringing freedom. Christ is the one who sets us free. We are enabled to live holy lives from habitual sin through the power of the Holy Spirit. And we bring this good news of freedom to all. 
The theme of freedom goes right back to the day we were founded. At a leadership level, the Episcopalian Methodist Church in 1860, there were those who were in secret society. They had a vested interest in slavery. They were charging pew rents and there was a rigid formality in their worship services. They didn't give freedom for the Holy Spirit to move. So from day one, we had free seats, freedom from slavery, freedom from secret societies and freedom in worship for the Holy Spirit to move. This could be described as the free Methodist way. And our bishops recently have put together some teaching called the free Methodist way. Life-giving holiness, love-driven justice, Christ-compelled multiplication, and God-given revelation. There is a message by our bishop, Keith Cowart, on these five values. And if you email the office, they will send you a link to it so you can watch it and you'll get that information at the end. We've looked at our history, our doctrine and our values, but what is our vision? Well, for many years, we've had a vision for church planting. One third of our churches have been planted in the last 10 years. However, we are still relatively small. There's only 36 churches. But in March 2019, God gave to us a vision. And that vision, and we've been sharing it since, is for 100 churches and more by 2034. This vision was tested and approved two months later at our annual conference. And then out of the blue in the, that June, somebody sent me an email. And that email had a link to the God in Love Unites as document. They said, have you seen this? And I hadn't. As I read it, I was deeply saddened by it. And I reached out to David at that time. But it got me thinking, has God prepared us with a vision to receive some of the British Methodists who will desire to remain faithful? If so then we need to be ready to embrace them as they join with us in helping fulfill the vision of 100 churches and more by 2034. We have already had the privilege of welcoming some wonderful Methodists into our Free Methodist family. And they've come in various ways. I'm just gonna give some examples. There are more than these, but these are just a few examples. Luis Cardoso, uh, came in as a guest elder 18 months ago. That was step one. And as we grew in a relationship with him, uh, he became a transfer elder into our conference in May. Churches such as West House Methodists, where the congregation came out, uh, similar to what we've just been hearing in Cormac and Ray, and they have affiliated with us. And in about a year's time or so, the desire and the hope is that they will become a full Free Methodist society. We have a small group in Derbyshire called New Harvest, the church plant, and they have started their journey as a full Free Methodist church plant. We have some ministers who've transferred credentials as positions have become available in our churches, and Ian Heath would be an example of that. Currently, there are two vacancies in one in Fordsham, in, which is in Cheshire, and the other Park Avenue in Belfast. Another way that people can join is by becoming a micro church. This is something that we've literally just developed. It is a small group of people gathering together as church in a home or a hall, and they can enjoy fellowship, discipleship together and do mission together and they will receive teaching from a host church. And there are two micro churches available for people to join. These are host churches that will provide the, the services and all that is needed for micro church. So this is something you might want to get involved in. One of the host churches in Light and Life, St. Hostel, and the lead pastor there is Pete Godfrey. He is the assistant to the national leader. So in other words, he's my assistant and I can vouch for Pete. 
And then the other is somebody that you know very well, uh, David Hull, Freedom Church, Bristol. And so these two churches will be running micro churches. You can check them out by clicking on the link to those uh, YouTube sites, which will be providing the content. You know, some of you may have lots of questions and I would love to spend more time with you and hear those questions to give you opportunity to chat and discern where God is leading you. Uh, with this in mind, we have set up a number of opportunities, Zoom meetings, where you can do that and ask any question that you like. So I just want to, in closing, uh, say that I, I understand that this is a difficult season and you will continue to be in my thoughts and in my prayers. And we as a Free Methodist Church are praying for you. And whatever the decisions you make, we want God's blessing on you. So I, I pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you, that his face will shine upon you and that he will give you peace. God bless. Amen. Thank you very much, John, for being with us and sharing that information. And uh, I've just been thinking, you know, those those three British Methodist ministers who planted the Free Methodist Church in this country all those years ago and uh, what they would think about this uh, gathering today. Probably greatly saddened, but also not surprised. And uh, we thank God for their faithfulness, too. Um, and we thank God for your faithfulness and for reaching out and sharing with us today. Mm -hmm.